Uh, yes, um, session four, ICTs as a green technology. We had six presentations, really quite interesting presentations, I thought. Um, two types of presentations. The first three dealt with what I would call sort of a, a countrywide sort of a approach to um, what ICT can do to mitigate the impacts of climate change. Um, and then we looked at uh, three, the three last presentations that looked at uh, issues related to um, um, management practices that are used specifically by a, a, tele um, a, a telecoms operator uh, in terms of uh, uh, building automation. We looked at uh, some research that's being done uh, by BT on uh, micromanagement. And what I thought was particularly interesting, we looked at some uh, management tools that can be used to assess uh, the carbon footprint in an organization and to plan some alternative uh, solutions. So, um, Sean Kidney, uh, the first presenter uh, from uh, uh, Climate Risk, spoke to us about the Telstra study uh, where we looked at uh, uh, the impact of ICT, uh, the, the potential impact that ICT could have on the Australian economy. Um, in summary, um, seven opportunity areas. Uh, one of the most significant uh, is um, remote uh, application of power management in terms of cost savings, but in terms of carbon savings, uh, increase, increase in renewable energy. Um, we talked about the importance of fiber um, uh, in that session. Uh, in session two, again, uh, we looked again, at, in this particular case, um, um, Kathleen Zomolani uh, of Etno spoke about saving the climate at uh, the speed of light, but we're looking at the European Union specifically and uh, this work was done in collaboration with uh, the World Wildlife Fund, the Worldwide Fund for Nature. We looked at opportunities. We heard about travel replacement, uh, dematerialization, uh, sustainable communities, the city planning, combined measures. And this introduces a, a point that Sheridan mentioned. There's a, there's a social dimension to all of this that I think we need to look at a little bit more closely. Some of that was addressed uh, by the ETHNO study, uh, and I might come back to that in concluding remarks. Three level effects, we're, we're familiar with them, the direct effects, the so-called 2%, uh, the indirect uh, effects, what I call process efficiency, and the systemic effects, which really have the greatest potential to, uh, to, uh, to mitigate uh, uh, climate change through the use of ICT. Uh, we talked about e-government uh, and the various services, process efficiency, that's quite important, the importance of policy reviews, uh, focusing on cities, that's where the infrastructure is, that's where the carbon's uh, expended, and we talked about some difficulties, uh, specifically uh, uh, the need to speak with one voice. Again, the, the, the human dimension of all of this is what's the most important component as far as I'm concerned. The technologies are there, we talked about it, but how do we get it together? And uh, what I liked about this presentation, that we do, provide, we do think in terms of, of a strategic approach. So difficulties, speak with one voice, complex relationships, and of course this is cross-sectoral. So again, we gotta get everybody on the boat on this. Our third intervention, uh, again, was on by Christian Olivry of the FTTH Council Europe. Uh, fiber optics and energy efficiency. Again, specifically, how can fiber optics help? Um, uh, some of the highlights, um, life cycle assessment, very important. Again, we need to get our handle on the methodology. Uh, we talked about standards in terms of uh, various metrics and so on, but maybe we need to look at how to standardize the approach to life cycle assessments, um, ISO 1440. We looked at telework and telemedicine in particular, and noted some savings in telework to, uh, in, 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 in the European Union, uh, 12 to 13%, somewhat less than what's happening in the US. Interesting uh, statement, uh, fiber networks, of course, consume less energy, and uh, one thing I re retained from that discussion was that 6% uh, uh, energy consumption from the power consumption from the operation of, uh, of fiber networks. Our next presentation went into uh, a specific case study of um, uh, an application. Um, Alberto Valera Sanz of Telefonica Spain spoke about building aut uh, automation uh, for energy efficiency. Smart buildings, this is a big, big issue. It's a big issue everywhere. Buildings consume an awful lot. Um, it's not just a question of individual buildings we learned about. Uh, certainly, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can connect all kinds of appliances. Um, um, but what we can also do, and uh, this is um, 
one of the main, I think, main messages from this presentation. While there is a 27% 20, savings on a branch office per branch office basis, the real interest is connecting all of these buildings um, uh, through networks so that remotely we can manage as per the needs, as per uh, the day, uh, the time of day, and so on. Uh, we were doing some work in Rwanda not too long ago, and when we spoke to our colleagues in the Ministry of Education about what were one of the key applications they could use, they said building management, facilities management, because we can't manage our facilities. So it's an issue that's not just appropriate for Telefonica, it's appropriate elsewhere. If we came up with a neat solution for this, uh, it would be uh, highly useful and it would be sellable in many of these countries. Um, so thanks to Alberto for his intervention. Uh, the next intervention uh, was from Suk uh, Sukdev Dley from SAS UK. Now Sukdev spoke about the methodology for measuring reduce, uh, reduction of carbon uh, for measuring uh, or reducing carbon emissions. Uh, he spoke about innovative uh, analytical and uh, tools to help for this. The main point I'd like to retain about this is there is a method that can be used. Now, he mentioned it in terms of maybe uh, reporting at the corporate level, but I think it could be useful at different uh, levels of scale, at the municipal level, and most likely at a national level as well. A scenario building, green strategies, looking at different scenarios, uh, cost accounting, uh, of both in terms of carbon uh, consumption as well as cost. Uh, so a, an interesting decision support platform. The question to me is, what else is out there in terms of other decision support platforms? Uh, mentioned the interesting work with Cisco. That work apparently now has been published online. It'll be interesting to see the details of that study. Um, uh, Cisco being a worldwide entity has used a methodology to integrate information from around the world on how to optimize greenhouse gas emissions using this, this, this tool. And last but not least, uh, we had an intervention from uh, Fabrice Safre, who's a principal researcher at the BT Group here in the UK on enabling energy micromanagement through ICT. We talked about demand side management, how ICT um, can help uh, dealing with what he called fine grain scheduling of individual e-consuming processes, i.e. dryers, consumer appearance, uh, appliances, and so on. This could have a significant impact, um, uh, and, uh, and um, how it could be used in, in, in demand-side management by modifying the level of, of pattern of electrical use um, and help to move loads, uh, to provide load balancing by moving loads off peak time uh, uh, times. So, uh, that, I felt, was a very useful and very interesting presentation. Uh, overall, I felt this was an extremely useful uh, session uh, from my perspective. We, we heard about some real action being taken at the national level. We heard about some tools that can be used to intervene in a practical way. We talked about tools that can be used to uh, influence corporate decision makers about the importance of this, uh, of, of using ICT and, and, and motivating it as a tool to reduce carbon footprints in corporations and other entities. So overall, uh, first of all, I was very happy to moderate. I learned a lot. And thanks again to the presenters. If they have any, uh, any comments to add, I'd be certainly here, uh, glad to hear from them as we move to the discussion. Mr. Chairperson, thank you very much.